everybody. I don't know if you've ever had a starter kick back on you, but my starter, the starter rope comes, <laughs> is supposed to come through here, but I pulled it. I did the, ro rolled it around past the compression stroke and everything, did everything timed right, and I pulled it, and it kicked back and kicked back so hard it yanked the handle, the rubber handle and everything right through and broke a hole in here. So my solution is stainless steel, folks. So I'm putting a stainless steel plate on here. Oops, that's not right. Let me get it on here right like that. And then the holes right there but I've got the eyelet that goes through there that's smooth so it don't cut the rope but that is basically the fix and then I'll rivet it you'll see everything that I do the other thing I have to do I have to make a hole somehow for this bolt I have to put that bolt in there so there has to be like a it's like a service access hole through here somewhere in here I don't know where but I'll have to make a make a hole here so I can put the bolt in there and then I'm going to rivet it to here, but I'm going to reinforce the rivets with some stainless steel washers underneath them. So it's super, super, as strong as I can make it. This rubber, rubberized plastic is apparently not that great. If that handle will drive and smack right through it and bust a big hole through it. So anyway, you'll see what I'm doing uh, as I go here, but this is the new top cover once uh well uh, my welder actually i took it to my welder and i, I cut this strip because i i had already pre-measured what i needed i cut this uh, like a flat strip out of my stainless steel sheet this is half mil by the way stainless steel sheet half millimeter half half of a thousandth of a millimeter maybe something like that but anyway it's thick in enough and i'm going to reinforce it with washers behind here and all kinds of stuff and i'm going to weld it we're going to tig weld the back of it and beef it up so that it may snap but it ain't going to break well it could shatter the rest of this plastic i don't know we'll see but anyway that's my fix for now i gotta go get some my drills and stuff and uh, figure out how to do the mounting i may i got to reshape this too slightly some i got to just do some tweaks bend some of the edges out or in a little bit so it's a nice snug fit so we will be back with more see it goes on the front here from my paradise on italian island paradise let me show you this paradise hi oh. there everybody look what we got you know earlier i guess you saw that when i was pull starting this thing what happens if your exhaust valve is out of adjustment it's open too far or this the gap is too big you'll get kickback you'll be more prone to get kickback and so when you pull the hand handle it like backfires and yanks that handle right back down through here well it yanked it so hard it knocked a hole in this thing I mean, I've since dremeled it and cleaned it up and stuff, but that's basically the hole it knocked clean through this plastic shroud. So, what I did was I went down to my handy dandy welder guy and cut, actually cut this piece of plate. It's 10 inches long and about, I don't know, four or five inches, four, three or four inches wide, three and a half inches wide, whatever the size was that I needed to put on here. I, I already had the piece, it was all flat. I took it to him with this uh, pull starter. This is the pull starter here. This is the rope. You can see the rope is right there. This, it, by the way, this will turn, rotate and you can use the pull starter from this side if you wanted to. But if you pull start this and it kicks back, it's just gonna rip a hole in that one too. So I decided that I would go heavy duty on it and build me a stainless steel top. So if it goes, what do you call that? Bonkers on me, <laughs> or whatever. Uh, it'll hit this and the whole, it, it, it could dent it. And it could rip the rope. I, I have no idea what it's gonna do when it hits this or it could crack more of this 
housing here. I have no idea, but this is just the best solution that I have. Uh, I can buy another one of these, but then if it kicks back, it'll just knock another hole in, in, in it. So at least stainless steel is stronger. Also welded the grommet for the rope because like the guide grommet is smooth so it doesn't cut the rope because this if you try to put the rope through here that'll eventually just cut right through it because it's just uh, 0.5 mil stainless. Uh, I also put a hole in here, a service hole, to put that nut in there because the nut, I mean a bolt goes in here so now I can stick my socket with the bolt in there and uh, but yeah we we got a pretty good fit. I'm about to rivet this all on here. So you can see everything fits pretty nicely. I'm in the shadows, of course, but you can see I'm still shadowing everything. But you can see it fits pretty nicely. So that's my game plan. I'm going to now uh, rivet this on, on, on here. I had to get extra long rivets too because I'm putting washers. I'm putting double washers. I'm putting a small washer on the top and a big washer on the bottom here to just reinforce where the rivets go through on the front and on the back. I probably don't need it on the front, but I am doing it just, I don't know, I think it looks cool, better, it looks beefier, and it may or may not be, it will be slightly beef. It goes like that, and the rivet head goes through here, uh, and it sits on here like that with the rivet through it, and the exact same situation on the back side too because uh, that's just plastic and I need to get a big surface area as big as I can get to uh, make this thing strong because I don't want to keep cracking this thing out in the middle of the ocean but I do have a spare I can turn it around and do that the other problem is is too that causes these these kickbacks is when you when they people that have boats and they think they're race boats they pull the governor out of here and it's inside of the engine and inside of here there's some kind of an exhaust relief mechanism that when you're pull starting it's it's got little centrifugal uh force like like weights that sl that fly out as the engine speeds up when it's running but when you pull start it's not going that fast so these little centrifugal weight things are in and when they're in it's got some kind of a mechanism that connects to the exhaust valve and pushes it in early before it's supposed to um, normally open so but then whenever the engine actually starts it's going fast and the centrifugal force slings those things out and it disengages that exhaust relief mechanism whatever it's called I don't even know what's called but that can cause kickback there's also in lawnmowers they got a little shear pin on the the output shaft here and this is timing too because see here you've got your magnet can't really see it very good but I've got all this stuff here in the way and I don't know what to do with it here we go I'll move some of this stuff around but there's also another thing, and the video is not about kickback. It is about kickback, but it's about what, how to fix something that got destroyed by kickback. But in here, there's, you see that nut? You take that nut off, and then supposedly between that, this shaft here, and the engine or something, there's a shear, like a shear key. And if, that's so that if you're, output shaft on the lawnmower if it hits something hard like a rock or something it shears that pin but all it does I think is screw up your timing because it doesn't make this just spin it just lets it tweak out of whack and when it tweaks out of whack your magnet here is no longer synchronized with your uh, coil or your magnet stuff. and so now your timing screwed up I don't get that anyway uh, so I'm gonna pull this off too and see if there's that type of mechanism on a this is a water pump engine for farm irrigation originally that's what these were it's not anymore this is the you know Sumerado marine version and it's done by the racing division 
right there. So it's it's four uh, boats, and it's built with you know the marine. They epoxy coated the undersides of these things. They epoxy coat the outside, so these rust, but the inside doesn't <laughs> rust. And even on this little air uh, duct here, air airflow duct here, it's got a white epoxy painting with a brush on the inside, but nothing on the outside. I think this is stainless though here. This is not. This is just galvanized. Uh, it's all de-rusted and painted now. The other weird thing is, look at this gas tank. Do you see that blistering? I painted this with a uh, enamel, no, not, uh, lacquer. Well, this is, I should have used this acrylic epoxy, because that's more gasoline resistant. But what I used was acrylic lacquer. And after it dries, that's supposed to be gasoline, you know, resistant too. But for some reason, it ain't. Or it's just not 100% dry or something. But anyway, look at the bubbles on that. And I've got gasoline in here about up to here. So I don't know if the gasoline is like soaking through. This, this is a plastic tank. I bought, uh, you know, on Shopee, which is like the Amazon of the Philippines. And uh, only the bottom is blistering. And only the bottom has gasoline where it could permeate and suck through and blister up the paint. But it shouldn't, I don't know, gasoline shouldn't be soaking through plastic gas tank. I don't get it. And when I fill this thing up, it may just blister the whole thing. I may have to just, I don't know, strip it down and repaint it with totally with this epoxy paint. I did find it at, at Ace Hardware, 250 pesos there at Ace Hardware. And I don't know how good this is, but they said epoxy paint is m much more resistant. And also urethane. I had some urethane, but it it was a joke. It went on like water and just ran all over the place and made a mess. It didn't really paint at all. So maybe it's just a bad can. So anyway, back to this. So I'm going to start riveting this guy back on here. And you can see I've got my first hole here. And I'm going to put those through here. And that's going to go through here. You see the hole right there. And I'm going to rivet that one. And then I'm going to drill the next hole and rivet it. And do just one hole at a time. And just snug this thing up as I go. Make sure it's nice and snug and everything's fitting well before I drill the next hole. Because as I pop rivet these in, it, it pulls everything in tight and it shifts where your holes will be. The other thing I did, I don't know if I showed you this, but I had, yeah, I showed you this one. I had washers and I dremeled them out with my Dremel tools. I have two Dremel tools. I have a big one and a small one. The small one is a joke, but it does work and these bits I bought are crap. They, they, they go dull just any, I mean, on stainless, they go dull. Well, stainless is tough, but still, it's carbide. Carbide wins the battle of stainless and carbide. And then I got this big behemoth here. This bad boy. This will rip. It's got so much power. You, you, you got to be careful, this thing. If this thing, if this head starts to go on like that, it, it'll, I don't know, just hold on like a cowboy on the back of a wild bull because get it out of the out of the wherever it's uh wherever you're doing your work pull it back out and stop that vibration because it'll go wild but uh anyway i use this to actually dremel that that bolt hole thing right there i dremeled all this shape out i drilled a hole first and then i dremeled this out so that i could put the bolt hole you see that bolt hole right there right there there's a bolt that goes through through there so this is the access hole for that because this is permanently attached and this can come on and off anytime i want to take it off so i but i got to take that bolt out and there's two more bolts on the side too so anyway that is the name of that tune so I'm going to go to town drilling and riveting it I've drilled all the holes in the stainless I want to drill them first just so I could get them uh, er, er, that's the hard part there you have to fight that to get a uh, drill bit through stainless uh, uh, cobalt drill bit as I've probably told you many times before uh, and uh, then 
after that I just use those holes as my guides and go through the little rubber plastic stuff and it's a piece of cake and then rivet so I'm going to do that and we'll be back with more have you seen my dual tachometer I, I, I bought one and uh, this one over here but I thought the readings were like double what it should be that's upside down too and I didn't trust it so I bought another one and this one's like half half the price but large longer cord and uh, nicer it's got settings you can do and so uh, I'm gonna when this thing gets back in action oh I also adjusted the the in intake valve it's normally 2.2 millimeters on the exhaust and 0.15 on the in intake but one of the guys on YouTube that was explaining uh, the kickback he said he puts both of them at 0.15 that opens this exhaust valve a little bit sooner so you don't get kicked back so much but like i said the governor's removed from here so i don't have that automatic exhaust kind of relief mechanism to prevent kickback so i got to be careful so i put that that one at 15.15 so we are going to finish that and that's enough miscellaneous ramblings, but they're all tied in. Everything's connected that I told you, except the tachometers. They're not. And anyway, this thing actually goes on to here. This is that's your air forced air cooling right there, that fan. And this goes on it, and this directs the forced air over over the engine cylinder head. And this bolts on to here like this. Your pull start goes right on the front of there. So that's where it ultimately winds up. And of course that whole assembly bolts onto the front here. So we will be back with more of that and that and that from my paradise on Bentayan Island. Paradise. All right, out. everybody, I got the first two rivets in here. As you can see, I got the additional washers on there just to give the rivet more spread, basically, a little more surface area to grip to. And the inside here is not in focus. There we go. That's the inside there. I've got the small. Oh, wait a minute. This one didn't work. This one here didn't work. I, I got to fix that. This one worked. You can see the small washer and the large washer both are there. But this one, they just came right off. That's not going to work. I got to. I don't know how I'm going to fix that, but I got to fix that. Let me fix that and then we'll be back. Paradise. All out. right, folks, check this out, huh? We got her all riveted in there and put her on there. Got the service hole for the bolt made. Wrap around. Got the handle on here. Got everything riveted on the inside with uh, extra washers doubled up to give it extra rivet strength everywhere. We hope. That's what we hope. <laughs> we hope this thing's going to hold. We don't know. We'll see what happens first time. Hopefully it's not so strong that, that the wheel breaks next time. I don't want that plastic wheel to break because then i got to buy a whole new starter assembly. <clears throat> and I haven't been able to find one. I looked for one online at Shopee and that, but they didn't have any Sumo Rado starter, uh, starter pull rope starter things, but check it out. Looks nice, huh? See that? You can get right to that, that uh, bolt there. Put that in. Beefy. Beefy. Extra beefy. Stainless steel too. 304 grade. Nothing but the best. We'll see if this thing lasts. We'll see if we can start it. Well, hopefully it doesn't give us any more kickback. But we... Uh, I got to kind of reassemble things. So I, I want to disassemble that first. Uh, I want to take this off and see if there is a shear pin in there I don't think there is but there may be who knows but we'll do that before we put it all back before we put that cover on and then that goes on the cover we could just put that on the cover right now wouldn't doesn't get in the way so we will be back with more for my paradise on Italian Island oh yeah check it out nothing but bulletproof I hope don't want to make too many big statements, but you know, that's the plan. Bulletproof. 
Paradise, well, kickback proof. How's that? Kickback proof. Paradise. Out.